In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add perspective to items that you've add, added to your photos in your e-learning courses, which you design in Adobe Captivate. So here's a course that I'm currently working on for one of my customers. And I have a, a set of images that I, I wish to show. One is uh, an image of a person doing some research. And I did a preliminary uh, download of the image from Shutterstock until I've got approval from the customer. There's no sense paying money for the stock photography. Uh, but since that time, they have approved the uh, this portion of the course. So we're going to be using this guy's image and a follow-up image where we see what's on his screen. Now, of course, what's on his screen is nothing in the stock photography. So I'm adding my own web page or a web page associated with what my customer's course is going to be about. And uh, I've done this sort of preliminary. You can see it's not really even a proper um, image because I've got some other stuff at the top here. But let me show you how you do the perspective part. And that's where things kind of make things interesting and gives you an opportunity to make your stock photography look like it was designed just for you and your customer. So I'm going to find that item in the library. If you click on the library panel, the tab for the library panel, you can, uh, well, you can do one of two things. You can click on each one and you know, until you eventually find it, or you can right click on the image in your e-learning course and select find in library and there it is. If I double click on this now, I see an image property window appears. And I can do a couple of things. I can either update the image and it will retrieve that image from its original location. Uh, if you don't have the image still in the original location, it won't work. Um, you can import an entirely new image to replace it, or you can edit and see other usage as well. In this case, I'm going to use edit. And when I use edit, it's going to ask me what application I would like to use it to edit this um, image. And um, I've already told it that I want to use Photoshop. So it's remembered that from before. So let's just, there we are. So there's the image. Uh, it's called Passenger Research 2. So this passenger is uh, researching their flight options for this particular course. And as you can see, here's the stock photography I've purchased from Shutterstock. Um, and then here's the image that I want to put on their screen. They're researching their uh, shortest flight option between Los Angeles and Thunder Bay. As you can imagine, there's no direct flights between those two locations. So I need to put this image on this image. So let's start by doing that. So I will hit Control A in Photoshop. Incidentally, I'm using Photoshop 5.1, but everything I'm about to show you should work with uh, any number of versions of Photoshop within the last five or six years or so. Uh, so I'm going to hit Control C to copy this, and I'm going to go over to my stock photography image. And I'm just going to hit Control V. And well, as you can see, it, it's not really, it's just a little tiny image here. So I need to adjust this because uh, this is a very high resolution image, and that's obviously just screen resolution. So, how do I do that? Well, I go into Edit and I go to Transform, and then I can choose Scale. Now, this is what I recommend that you do if you have either a too large an image or too small an image. You know, just resize it so that it's close to the actual size. Now, you can maintain the aspect ratio, which I encourage. You don't want to do too much skewing of this image. You want to keep it this, as close as possible uh, until the last moment. So I'm just going to click on that Maintain Aspect Ratio icon. And I'm just going to resize this so that it's approximately the size of this gentleman's screen here. And then I'm going to commit to that by clicking the check mark. You can also hit the return key or your enter key. 
You can see it's it's okay. I mean, you could I guess you could use this, but it doesn't look like it was actually on this guy's screen when this photo was taken. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit once more, and this time I'm going to choose transform and I'm going to use skew. Now, this is probably one of the easiest things in the world to do. You have these selection handles, and of course, if I make this invisible for a moment. Let me just cancel out. If I make this layer uh, not visible for a moment, really, if I just focus on trying to get that adjustment to match what's happening on his computer screen, then I should be good to go. So let's make that visible again. I'll hit Edit, Transform, and Skew, and then all I need to do is match the lines that are on the background here and release and just get it so that those items end up in the corners of his screen as close as I possibly can. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to hit the check mark and it will commit those changes. So now I have an image that looks like this guy who was photographed somewhere else by a completely different photographer um, now I have an image that looks like he's doing research for flights between Los Angeles and Thunder Bay. And he's looking for the shortest option. So that's perfect. So now I can actually, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control A and then Control C to copy this image. Now actually, uh, excuse me for a moment, I actually want to do Control Shift C because I'm going to copy the merged image, both layers. I don't want just the one layer I've selected. And then I'm going to go to my image that's from my e-learning. That's a smaller resolution image. And I'm just going to paste this right over top of the existing image. And we're going to need to resize that because, again, the, the original image was very low resolution and this is much higher. So we're going to use the transform scale option again. We're not going to be skewing this time. We are going to maintain the aspect ratio because I don't want it to look distorted. And I'm just going to resize using the selection handles uh, until such a point. And there's probably a better way to do this. I'm just dragging the image back up to the top, resizing it, drag it back up. Each time it's getting a little bit smaller. I think you can do this using the um, the percentage and pixel uh, fields up at the top here, but you know I'm a very old-fashioned guy and I like to do things in a very manual way. So let me just keep resizing this till I have something close to what I want, and that's sort of in the range that I'm looking for here. Um, that's not bad. I'd like to see some of his head to make it very clear that he's there doing the research. That's not bad. I'd still like to see more. I'm willing to actually take a bit of a hit just to see clearly that there's someone sitting there in front of the monitor. So I'm taking a hit on the maintaining the aspect ratio a little bit there. I turned it off and then just resized from the side selection handles to get what I wanted here. And that looks pretty good. Now it looks really pixely right now because I'm just seeing a preview of what this size adjustment is. Once I hit the check mark here, I should get a better quality image. That's what's happened here. Now again, this image is much smaller than the original stock image. So I'm never going to get this quality again because uh, this is a really tiny image, but I am happy with the results here. So now I can actually, uh, before I return, now remember this is the image that I'm editing directly from my e-learning course in Adobe Captivate. Before I release this image back to Captivate, I do need to um, flatten this image so that I don't have layers, because Captivate won't know what to do with the layers. 
but I can now, of course, close this, and I can say yes, save the changes, and if I return to Adobe Captivate, I now have an updated image that shows uh, everything that I wanted to see there. That's perfect. That's exactly what I had in mind. Yeah, people won't be able to see, but clearly this guy's doing research, and these are airline logos here, so uh, it's not 100% perfect, but it's certainly perfect enough for my purposes here. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm doing, uh, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel, and if you like this video in particular, please give me a thumbs up.